Welcome. We're just going to be doing a short video on how to problem solve using Railphone and making a basic brick wall. Okay, so let's start with our wall. And we'll just put a couple of window holes in for measure. That should be enough for test. Now, first of all, we've just quickly made a brick here. I want the brick to be 110 millimeters tall by 230 wide. And for the height of this, we're just going to be poking this out of the wall by 5 mil. I mean, you can adjust this if you need. Now, what we're going to do is create one row and then the other, and we'll offset it. So what we'll do is we'll create a quick array. Let's call this row 1. and put our segment and our spline in. Choose our brick. And we're going to do a few transforms on the brick. Um, so that we can give the user a bit of choice as to changing the brick size after. So we'll put that into a transform now. And basically a Y evenly, so it just goes all the way across. Alright, and because we're going to be changing the size of the brick, we want to be able to adjust the fixed size of the brick. I'll show you in a moment why. We want to make sure it's extended to the XY size area and we're going to give it a bit of an expansion just so that we can shift the wall left and right of the spline and it should stay all within the spline. Okay, so as you can see this is our brick size all lined up next to each other. <clears throat> the first thing to do is get them to align stacked on top of each other. Now, a good way to sort of problem solve this is it's like, well, at the moment they're spaced a thousand. So if we were to just make that 200, we can start to see the size is affecting where we need that brick. Now, because we know the size of the brick is 110 high, this would probably be bound to 220 to be exact in there. But if we change the size of the brick, then we need that to adapt. Let's do that. So this here is the Y evenly distance. So let's export that. Okay. So our fixed size here, as you can see, is the height of that brick. And we can tell that is the width of our brick. Good. Okay, so let's export those two. You can name these how you like, length, width, whatever works for you. And now we've exposed these to here. So if we wanted to change them, we can. But for now, we'll just leave it as per our brick size. Now, because we want to have two rows, we're going to have the second row centered to each brick. 
So what we want to do is with our evenly distance to begin with, we want to make sure that's always in relation to our Y size. So let's Y that up. We'll make sure the whatever the Y size of this brick is, because it's going to just transform, we'll export that Y size. And we'll connect that to the even loop. Now we have them perfectly stacked. But that's not exactly what we want. We want to have every second row. So let's get a arithmetic node. Call that multiply by two. We'll take the Y size. We'll get our number two and multiply it for the distance. So now if we change the distance, it should stay relative. Okay, that's row one. Let's make row two. Now with row two, we want that same brick, but we want to shift it across. So let's put a transform in there and put our segment into the Y evenly. And we can simply transform that across. Now we know the length of the brick is 230. So if we went, say, 115 and shifted it down, we're going to have our offset. However, again, what would be better is if we can wire these two into this so that whatever we change the brick size to, it will change along with it. So let's reset these and basically let's have a look if we can find another option here. Maybe sorry, wrong one. We want to offset that row by the height of our brick. So let's export that and we want the Y size of the brick. Excellent. So now we want to just translate half of whatever our X size will be. So if we change this, it'll always be centered to that brick. So let's get another arithmetic node. And we'll call this divide by two. We'll take our x brick size divided by two. And we want to shift this along the x axis. So you can see it here in our transform. Let's export that from our transform. And it should always be in the center, no matter what we make the brick width to be. All right, good. So the next part is essentially we want to create the mortar gaps in between. Let's just check it's working all over. Good. Okay. So if we go back to our original brick, let's have a look. Padding. Okay, that seems to work quite well for what we need. Okay, so whatever we make this, it's good to have these tied together, obviously. So let's go back and export the padding. Let's 
call that mortar. Mortar size. And we can plug that into the left and the right. Come over to our mortar size and let's make it say 10 mil. You can make it 20 mil, whatever works for you. And we have this working everywhere we go. Good. Now, obviously, sometimes you're going to want to be able to shift the wall up and down so that it's the brick sits flush on the bottom of the window or the doors, whatever you want. So let's find out how we do that. If we go back to our transform, we can see if we play with this, we can see it shifting left and right. Okay, good, that's what we need. Same with the Y, shifting up and down, good. So we just follow what we did before and export the transform on the X and Y. And we'll make another numeric node. And we'll call this X offset. Y offset and plug these in. Now if we want we can shift the wall left and right up and down. Now because just take note that what we did before when we added the expansion of 100% we are going to hit a limit here but I figured we have enough room to go left and right, <clears throat> maybe a couple of meters. So if we have a look, let's really push that, say 2,000 meters, uh, 2,000 mil, we're going to hit a point where the, the brick comes off. So a good idea in this situation is maybe just set a limit. Minus 2,000 and 2,000. The user shouldn't need to really go above or below that. We're just shifting the bricks around just a little bit to match on either the edges of the wall or the sides of the windows, whatever it is. So that's essentially our, don't mind my other walls there. That's essentially what we need to do to complete the wall. Now we can really have a bit of fun with it. Change the size of the bricks and everything works with it. Now for the final piece of the puzzle you might be wanting to texture this quickly and what you can do is before any of these other transforms happen We'll add a material to the brick and we'll say 1 to 200. We can go and create a basic material. Let's pick out rail clone color. And then we can pick a bitmap. And we'll pick our brick. Notice here I just have a seamless brick texture. Because we're going to put something else on the mortar. We could put just a basic wall behind it. And uh, you'll have your bricks poking up off the wall. So let's put that on the wall. And you can really do this how you want. You can add in extra textures. Or you can just use the base texture. And apply a tint tint to it. So you could do something like that. And when you render, you'll have your randomized brick. Obviously that doesn't look so great, but you know, you can experiment from here and apply whatever modes, colors, different textures that you prefer. And I uh, hope that gets you problem solving with um, your rail clone methods and, um, you know, testing out different methods. I like to just go through and see what each of these do 
and then when I have a good understanding, um, I just plug in a constant or a, a numeric value for the user and then they can control it from there. As long as they work together, um, you should be fine. All right, good luck.